Hey everybody. In this video I'm going to talk about um, troubleshooting your Seton Infinity V4 USB or PCIe or Infinity V6 PCIe. Some of this information might be also be relevant for users who have the Infinity V6 ETA, more or less the standalone network tuner device. <clears throat> but basically, um, I've had this Seton Infinity V4 PCIe tuner for around seven to eight months now, and I've gotten I've got a pretty good bit of experience of how to troubleshoot the thing because it has thrown a lot at me over the course of time that I've had it. But once once you get it all figured out, it works great. Had to give it that. Once you get all the loopholes figured out with it, it works absolutely wonderful. But, um, basically I'm making this video because one of the viewers posted some comments to the, um, video about how to set up one of media center for use with a cable card. Um, in that video, more or less, I ran a tutorial on how to set up, um, one media center with a Satan Infinity V4. And, and of course, because YouTube has decided that... Oh, you should use your full name now. Many people have switched from pseudonyms to full names. So, used to be back, used to be back in the day, I could just refer straight to the um, comments page. But I'm not going to share the person's full name in this video. So what I did is I just copied and pasted the comment I replied with to this notepad. I'm going to just run through this right quick to try to um, explain some things. If you're having issues with your seating, so basically, it boils, it boils down to this. Um, in terms of installing, you need to follow the directions to the T, because um, if you mess up anywhere, it can more or less have a domino effect and intensify. That's something you don't want to have happen. Basically, um, if you need um, advice on how to install your seating, feel free to check out my. Um, Satan Infinity TV review, I believe it's review number 15. Anyways, you can go back and check out that, and um, that way you get a general idea of how to install your Satan and how to set up one of his media center and that kind of stuff. And how to, more or less, how to get everything configured. But let's say you've installed everything and you just keep having trouble <laughs> with it. Basically, I'm with his media center. Um, if it runs into a problem, it will show an error message of some sort on this screen. And here I have a list of some of the most popular error messages you will see with a Seton tuner. So basically, um, first, when it comes to pairing your Seton with your cable card, that's something you have to do when you install it. Um, there is a list of phone numbers in the box that your Seton came in. List of support phone numbers to call depending on which cable service provider you have. Such as, let's say, Time One Cable, Comcast, or whoever, you can call them up, and um, basically, um, you can go into either one of Media Center, or Satan Diagnostics, to, um, let's see, the cable card tab, I believe. You will give them, more or less, your device ID, your reference ID, or whatever, and um, have them send a pair signal to your device and get everything up and running and of course once that's done um, <clears throat> if you have pixelation or any um, issues like that let's say pixelation or uh, weak TV signal errors that kind of stuff you will want to um, check your cable signal so basically um, as I mentioned the seat and tuner encounters any sort of problem when it's made signal will display a message when the signal is poor, you'll see messages such as service unavailable, weak TV signal, or STV error if you're using a tuning adapter, such as that there, which is practically required with many of the cable service providers, such as, like, like let's say, Time Warner Cable. So basically, um, if you're getting these kinds of errors, it's very likely your cable signal is not good. That's one of the first issues I had with Seton. It's because the Seton is very sensitive to 
cable signal like many other cable car devices. Now the funny thing is, let's say you have a set top box and it's working fine. That doesn't always mean your cable signal is perfectly fine. I have found that, um, and even the cable technician told me about this, the set top box is able to work around a weak signal and still, you know, work. But devices such as a Seton will fall flat on their face if the signal was out of range. And of course, if your signal is very bad out of range, you will have issues with your internet too. And if, you're, and if you have the um, <laughs> overpriced phone service with your cable company, you'll have issues with that too. So basically, when it comes to Seton, you can go into your web browser and type in 192.168.1.112, press enter. You'll come up with this screen here. <clears throat> and then you want to click over to, to 1, 2, 3, 4, or if with, let's say, uh, Infinity 6, 1 through 6. Now, of course, you need to actually have a particular tuner um, actually tuned into a um, channel. Otherwise, it'll say something like, um, well, actually, this one next is actually turned on too, but it'll say not tuned. You want to check your signals and make sure they're with, within, let's say, um, <laughs> negative 4 to positive 5, or maybe over positive 5 a bit. For example, this um, signal level is positive 5.3. If your signal drops below negative 4, you will start to have issues such as pixelation, dropping channels, that kind of stuff. More or less, you know, if you ever use a digital antenna, over the air antenna, it'll be the equivalent of that. <clears throat> so, if your signal is bad, you need to call your cable um, company out there and have them fix the problem. And this is with us, um, all that was required when the <laughs> when the right technician came out to really fix the problem, he installed what's called an equalizer. It's, kind of, it's more or less a powered amp that um, ensures an equalized boosted signal to every cable outlet in the home. So basically uh, we're getting a good signal now so we don't have issues with pixelation. Now sometimes you might see maybe a frame where once in a while get pixelated. That's pretty normal. Sometimes the channels will actually get pixelated within the cable system not necessarily with your seating device. That being said, let me go ahead and move on. Let's see if your cable card is not paired correctly or you change the channel to a, to a channel that you don't subscribe to, you will see either subscription required, service unavailable, or STV error. And of course, if you're um, trying to access channels that you know you subscribe to, and you get this message, it's very likely that your cable card is not paired correctly or your tuning adapter is not getting a list of channels to switch to. And sometimes, more or less as soon as the um, tuning adapter is cold booted for the first time, it takes a little while to download all that information. <clears throat> more or less, you can actually see it doing it within here. Now of course it says TR status ready, but it'll tell you if it's downloading channel map or whatever. So if you're having issues with um, cable card, you want to call the cable card support hotline and have them do another pair with your device. Sometimes the cable card itself can be bad. Yeah, in cases like that, you actually have to take the cable card back to your service, your your um, to the office, and have them give you another one. I've heard reviews of people saying it took six or so cards <laughs> to get it figured out. Luckily, the first one, the first cable card I got was perfect, no problems. And of course, um, even though the USB device, or let's see, um, Seton PCIe device is physically connected to your computer, or of course, inside your computer, it is still a network, con a network connected device. It has its own IP address, and of course it has its own web interface like a wireless router does. So basically, if um, if your um, Seton loses connection with the computers, or more or less your computers lose connection with the Seton, 
you'll get messages such as this. Service not available, SDV error, tuner error, or viewing or listening conflict. That's the most popular one right there. And I think this one, this um, portion here, the um, network portion is probably the most common series of issues people have with Seton devices. Network issues. Even when you don't have network tuners configured, like let's say you're only using the Seton on the host computer, it's still a network device. You go into Windows Device Manager, it'll actually be under network devices, not under um, more or less under audio and you know, video and game devices like older TV tuners are. The Seton is a network device. <clears throat> so that being said, um, one of the first ways you can troubleshoot this if you're having issues with um, getting TV to work on, let's say, one of your computers, try pulling up a web browser and navigating to the um, Seton's um, web page. Now, of course, is this is the default um, IP address for the Seton. Another way you can access this, like let's say in Windows 7, click on Start, go to Computer, or if you have Network shown in the Start menu, click on Network, go to Network and Sharing Center, change adapter settings, or you can see your network connections. The way the Seton works is it creates a network bridge on the host computer. That way, the computer can actually access the Seton through the network. <laughs> So as I mentioned, even though it's physically plugged into the motherboard either through USB or through a PCI Express slot, it is still a network device according to the host computer. And if your network bridge gets deleted, or if you um, something goes wrong with the network bridge, such as you try to add other things to it, I even had issues with, with Virtual Box. <laughs> when I installed that, I was having issues with that. Um, if anything like this occurs, you have issues with the Seton. And here's one thing I noticed that um, that happened with me when I was trying to troubleshoot this thing for network issues. And once I right-click and, and open the um, properties box there and click on configure to get this box. Go to advanced tab. Go to support bridging. This value should be set to yes. Somehow or another got set to no. And of course that was causing my issues. So that must be set to yes to support bridging. Because if it doesn't support bridging, other devices cannot access this tuner. <clears throat> and last but not least, um, if you've actually went through and you can get the web page, your Seton device is bridged, enabled, the um, support bridging value is set to yes. Go into Seton Diagnostics. And of course, let me go ahead and close this out and, and pull it back up again and make it search. Now, of course, it pretty much instantly found the Seton. Sometimes it may take a little while. But if it sits there saying searching and saying no Seton device found, continuing the search, chances are there's a network issue somewhere where the Seton is not online. Now of course I'll come back to this software here shortly because I want to explain a little bit more about it. But um, another thing you need to definitely check if you have network issues is your cables. Your Ethernet cables. Check your router or switch to make sure the um, status and um, activity LED lights for the particular port your cables are plugged into are functioning. Because if they're not, that would explain the issue right there. Now, um, in some cases, the um, activity lights will be working, but if you have a cable that has a loose end or a um, frayed end or something is messed up with the cable, you may have intermittent issues with network <laughs> network network wise problems with your seating. For instance, I kept having issues with service unavailable, um, viewing or listening conflict, that kind of stuff. Turns out the Ethernet cable going from the switch in the other room to the home theater computer was bad. I replaced that with a brand new cable. Have not had any problems like that ever since. Works like a dream. Here are a couple other things to keep in mind when troubleshooting your seating for network issues. 
the Seat Infinity 4 PCI Express and I believe the Infinity V6 PCI Express cards have a diagnostic light on them. It lights up either blue or red. And when the Seaton is connected to the network and has its IP address and everything, it will light up a dim solid blue like it's doing right now. The Seaton is currently working and is connected to the network. When the Seaton is not connected to the network where it doesn't have an IP address, it will flash blue very fast and very bright. So you'll see more or less when you restart your computer and everything, you'll see it go red and you'll start to see it um, flash blue very fast, very brightly. And then usually what will happen is the seat will connect to the network by the time Windows is showing the welcome screen. That's usually how long it takes. But if the um, light just keeps flashing blue on and on and does not switch over to this dim blue, then the seat is not getting connected. Sometimes you may have to restart your computer to get it to work. Another thing to keep in mind is um, after you troubleshoot your Seton, sometimes Windows Media Center will continue to say viewing or listening conflict. What you have to do sometimes is you have to restart the Windows Media Center receiver service. Usually it takes a little while to resolve on its own, but you can speed up the process by going into the control panel in Windows. Going to administrative tools. like so and then you will double click on the services link it's down here you need to do this to every computer that you're trying currently trying to view TV on you have to scroll down in the services window to Windows Media Center receiver service and there's a link there to restart the service. I'm not going to click this because I don't need to restart it, but basically you'll close out Windows Media Center, restart this service, then close out services, and then double click Windows Media Center icon and start Media Center back up and try to get the TV again. So I'm going to pull this back up and read through it some more. Um, I just covered this right here. Network issues. Last, if your computer's display driver or display connection, such as your VGA cable, or better yet, your DVI cable or display port connection, does not support playback or protected TV content, more or less channels that are flagged as copy once or copy never, you'll see the following error message on Windows Media Center. HDCP support required, or display driver error. If you see this one here, it means your graphics card is not compatible. You see this one here, it means either your display or the cable you're using is not compatible. So I'm going to go and run a little demonstration here. This monitor here does work with TV, but that one does not on protected, can on protected channels because it is connected over a um, display port connection. This one's connected over VGA, so it works just fine, but I can't actually display TV in this video due to copyright, but um, I will pull up Media Center move it to the rightmost display and make it show the HGCP support required error message. So let's go to guide and choose a channel. You guys are going to like this one. <laughs> Time Warner Cable likes to uh, flag almost every single channel as copy once. You guys might get a good laugh out of which channel I choose once I can find it. Yours truly, the weather channel. You know the channel that used to show 24 hour weather all the time, but now shows all these shows that people don't care much about? Well, let's sell and, let's sell and watch the weather channel. Now surely this is not protected, it's just the weather channel. HDCP support required. High bandwidth digital content protection may not be supported by the current video card. Use an HDCP compliant display video card or video driver or connect using an analog connection such as component or VGA. So yes, the weather channel is, by Time World Cable, a protected channel. <laughs> Get that. But this is what, um, 
This is the error message you'll get. Just for an example. Basically, if you get um, this one here, it has to do with the cable. If you get this one, it likely has to do with um, your computer's video card or integrated graphics. In this case, you have to install a video card, or if you have an all one PC, you're pretty much out of luck. But, um, <clears throat> let me come back to this Seton Diagnostics tool. I'm going to explain what these tabs here do, so that way if you're trying to use the software, um, this will help you a little bit. Basically, this Infinity TV tab is just a summary of the device. It tells you your driver package, diagnostic tool version, driver versions, tuning adapter driver versions, firmware, and all that kind of stuff. Click over to devices. What happened here is, um, this is the Infinity TV Diagnostics. And what this will do, it'll just access the seat and, and get a report of everything on it. Such as, like, let's see, temperature, what are the devices responding, that kind of stuff. Sometimes it can take a little bit. If it just now found it. Drivers are installed. It's configured for use with Windows Media Center. It's responding. Temperature's okay. Tuning adapter found and drivers are installed. The tuning adapter service is running. There are enough tuning adapters to connect to handle all Infinity V tuners. Now this is the cable card tab. If you're having cable card trouble, you can tune to this. Well, you can <laughs> you can click on this tab. I don't think you want to tune to it, but um, <clears throat> you click on this tab. It's searching for the cable card. Of course, it takes a little bit. It found it. Cisco <laughs> cable card detected. OOB is locked. Receiving OOB messages. And here's that pairing information I was telling you about earlier. You can just simply pull up the diagnostics tool. And here's all the information you'll ever need for pairing your device. <clears throat> now, I'm not really sure why it's getting an error message here. Probably because Windows Media Center already had tuned to the um, Tuner 1. But anyways, um, go to Diagnose. This is the um, Collect Diagnostics tab. And let's say if you are having issues and you tried everything you can, you can go to Seton's website and get a hold of their support and submit a support ticket. And basically what you have to do is if you're requested to collect information, you'll go into this Diagnostics tool, click on the Diagnose tab, and click on Collect Information. And of course you'll fill out these fields here. And um, <clears throat> type in a description of your problem. And what it does is, is it collects information about your device. And of course, whatever you type in here, saves it to a file that you can upload and send to Seton. I had to use this one time because, um, basically, I was having issues, a lot of issues actually, with, let's say, subscription required on channels that we are subscribed to. And I could not flash the, um, the Seton with the latest firmware. It would not accept it. So I sent this information to Seton, and they said that I had to, more or less there was a defect with the tuner, so I had to send it back to them. Got the same tuner back, same box, everything, and um, so far, everything has worked fine, and of course, after I got the network issue figured out. So you use this Diagnose tab, of course, to send diagnostic information to Seton. Here's the Update tab. If you have updates for firmware, you can update your device from this tab. Last but not least, advanced. <clears throat> but anyways, let me go back and um, to devices. I'm only going to talk about one more thing here. You probably see these three buttons here. Now, of course, this one here is used to discover tuners. Let's say if you're having issues with network and you can't find your tuners, you can click this to discover tuners. Now, with these two buttons, you want to be very, very careful these are last resort options because if you reset network settings you have to reconfigure all that from scratch if you clear your tuner configuration you have to configure it all from scratch so these are last resort options so be very careful with these okay that concludes overview of the diagnostics tool let me go back to the web page of course as I mentioned earlier you can view the signal strength from here, from tuners 1 through 4. 
view status of the cable card. And of course, you'll need to notice information if you're on the phone with your cable service because sometimes they will ask you to navigate to this. Now, with Time Warner Cable, they're very knowledgeable about seating, so they can just walk you through this fairly easily. And there's all the card applications, number of channels, and it's funny, only 235. That's because the rest of them are switched through that thing. And of course, it tells you all this information here about your out of band frequency, all that kind of stuff. And of course, here's the system tab. This is the default tab that comes up when you pull up your seating. Tells you information about your firmware, the firmware file, power status, boot up, I mean, status, uptime. This seating this has been up for 22 days. That's how long it's been since the Mid Tower Lux has been restarted. And, um,. Tells you memory usage, storage usage, the host connection, which is PCIe Ethernet, the IP address, MAC address. And here's a network settings button. You can configure network settings from here. Now, of course, let me go and go back to the cable card because there's something I'll scroll, I'll scroll down and show you. Um, there's a feature in the latest beta firmware as of now that allows you to disable EAS forwarding. Let's say if um, an AMBO alert something or something happens or they're testing the EAS alert system. Windows Media Center has an issue with that. Um, it's like Windows Media Center cannot seem to understand how to, to clear a message from your screen. It will sit there and run the message for hours on end instead of clearing it. So, um, what you can do is click on this D disable ES forwarding and it should stop um, those messages from being displayed to your um, Windows Media Center because anytime we have like let's say a tornado watch or severe thunderstorm warning or anything like that we find it on either <laughs> through the news or through the internet because anytime a storm comes up I always check the weather channel or weather.com but anyways um, I'm going to show you the tuning adapter tab. Here's all the information about the tuning adapter. There's only one tuning adapter because installed, so you won't see anything here. So I go back to one. And it tells you information about the, um, <clears throat> the tuning adapter, saying it's ready. Your downstream status, upstream status, authentication, all of that kind of stuff. Number of tuners, active tuners. Number of channels, see there's 700 channels on the tuning adapter, <laughs> and um, the remaining ones are on the cable card. Z235. Anyways, um, that being said, let me go and show you the log here. If you're having issues with your seat, you can go back in the log and just look, look through this for events and all that kind of stuff, and there's a bunch of stuff here. And it's funny, all this stuff here was from prior to having the actual tune the card. It's either that or the um, date and time's not correctly set on this card. But, yeah, this is getting to be a pretty long video. It's about half an hour long. But I just wanted to go ahead and run through this. and um, That way you guys, if you're having issues with your seating, hopefully this can kind of help you a little bit. Before wrapping this video, I'm only going to mention one more thing about the um, tuning adapter. It seems like with tuning adapters, a lot of times they cause many of the problems with seatings when it comes to uh, service unavailable or STV errors, obviously. This one here, is, there have been times where I've had to reset it on a weekly basis because it would get too slow to respond quickly. Basically, what would happen is I try to change the channel to a switch channel. The screen would go black and then Windows Media Center would say service unavailable or STV error and you could just simply hit up on the channel button and hit back down on the channel button and it would just come right to life. Turns out this was the culprit for that. So if you have issues like that on a regular basis you can definitely try exchanging your tuning adapter out, out for another one from your cable service provider because at least with Time Warner Cable when you um, subscribe to a cable card you also get this thing to go with your cable card because of course with Time Warner they use switch service, unlike some other service providers that are all just through the cable card. So anyways, 
Yeah, this is getting me pretty long, so hopefully this is helpful. Any questions or comments, feel free to ask, and thanks for watching.